Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Just for who you are, God. Help me sing one more time. Choir, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Come on, somebody just take a moment, lift your hands to the Lord. Tell him how much you love him. Help us think of Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Nobody like you, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Come on, help us think. We adore you. We adore you. Hallelujah. Your name is above every other name. We adore you. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord, help us sing the highest praise. Hallelujah. lesson tonight will be presented by our pastor, Pastor Brown. Hear ye him. Amen. We reverence God and thank him for our being here tonight and all of you that are here with us. Um, we thank God for this opportunity we have uh, to share in the study of his word and to study the word of God. Uh, thank, you. thank you for this opportunity to to prepare and study for the lesson that has to do with exiles. And God knows all about uh, being an exile uh, and what it carries with it. And we need to understand that being an exile carries with it also responsibility to stay with who you are. Amen. You know, Paul said when in Rome, uh, act like the Romans, but the truth is, you ought to be a Christian everywhere you go. Man. You can go on cruises, you can go on anything. Um, but an exile is described as someone who is expelled from one's native land by authoritative decrees. And that's what we are facing in our lesson today that uh, the children of Israel, the children of the southern kingdom, didn't leave out of Jerusalem because they wanted to. They were expelled. Amen. <laughs> and to be expelled means to be put out. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 and the truth about the matter is they weren't going on no vacation down the valley. <laughs> They were going in as, you can call them refugees, prisoners. Uh, they were going in under the banner of being captives. They had been overpowered. And that was not their choice, but it was their choice. We never choose the consequences of our choices. Y'all knew what I said. But we suffer the consequences of our choices. Man. So Ezekiel uh, is declaring uh, unto them a word from the Lord. Um, and let me say to you that there is a word from the Lord even in our day and time. Man. No matter no matter how bad it may appear, uh, Ezekiel is sharing with them a word from the Lord. Let me let me read for you uh, our text, printed text, and then we'll proceed from there and look at the breakdown on this particular lesson, preaching to the exiles. 
Amen. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, saith the Lord, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, hath not eaten up on the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, shall, I mean, neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath come near to a mistress woman, and hath not oppressed any, but has restored to the debtor his pledge, has spoiled none by violence, has given his bread to the hungry, has covered the naked with a garment. He that hath not given forth upon usury, neither has taken an increase, that has withdrawn his hand from iniquity, has executed true judgment between man and man, has walked in my statues, and has kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just. He shall surely live, saith the Lord God. That's verses 1 through 9. Now verses 30, uh, verse 30 through 32. And it concludes this lesson. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, said the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. Our key verse, golden text, as they used to call it, all souls are mine. This is verse 4, chapter 18. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall. This lesson is divided into three parts. First part deals with that proverb, that book is one through four, and the people who are getting to repeat this proverb and they have selective memory and selective hearing. And the Lord refuted that proverb. The second is a case study, a man's actions and God's verdict. And finally, we're going to talk about a call, call for the people to repent. And that call to repent is also a call to live. Ezekiel is one of those familiar prophets um, he's a contemporary of Jeremiah, he prophesied doing it after the final chaotic years of the kingdom of Judah, called by God in the fifth day of the fourth month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity. Jehoiachin reigned over only three months, around 597 BC, before the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem and took him, along with thousands of the most prominent and skilled people of Judah to Babylon. Uh, it is believed that that's when uh, that group that we are familiar with, those uh, princes and prince of, of, of Judah were taken, uh, um, Hananiah, 
Mishael, Azariah, and this guy named Daniel. Amen. They were at first uh, captivity. And uh, you maybe you remember Daniel's compadres by their Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But you know, they also gave Daniel another name, Belteshazzar. Mm -hmm. But it didn't stick. Mm -mm. Amen. And the reason it didn't stick is God's commitment. I mean, Daniel's commitment to God. Amen. His name is because all of those Babylonian names were named after Babylonian gods. But it had reference mm -hmm. to Babylonian gods. But Daniel's commit, I mean, yeah, Daniel's commitment to God, no matter what name they put on him, it didn't stick. Amen. And when you got a commitment to God, people will try to name you, rename you, undermine your name, or whatever tag they try to put on you. Amen. You can live so that it won't stick. Even in the final days, when Babylon was getting ready to go under. The, the, the queen said to the king, there is a man in your kingdom mm -hmm. who dwelleth the spirit of the living God and told him how he prophesied to your father, Nebuchadnezzar, and how he's always been a man of faith and a man of God. And then he said, send for Daniel after over 50 <laughs> some years. Amen. That name that they tried to put on him didn't stick. He was still Daniel. He was still the committed one to God. Uh, the deportees included uh, Ezekiel. He was a part of that band. And as they were carrying him into Babylon, amen, he passed by a battlefield. He saw a lot of dead bones, an army laying out there not knowing <laughs> And later that God was going to bring back to his memory what he had seen. He's going to liken it unto Israel. And he's going to ask him a question. Can these bones live? And no, the question that is being asked in this lesson now about Israel. Can we live? Can we survive this? They making excuses. They point fingers. But the Lord meant for them to survive. Mm -hmm. really did. But not all of them. <laughs> the problem with the nation had gotten so deep. Y'all listen to what I'm trying to say to you. It had gotten so deep. They had become so corrupt. They had become so idolatrous that even when Jeremiah prayed for him, God said, I can't do it. God said, I got to root out. I got to tear down and then I'm going to turn around and build them back up. And there are some people we pray for God, Lord, deliver him. Lord, don't let this happen. Do it. Lord, don't. Lord said, no. What's in him? I got to get, I got to root it out. And some people you don't help by rescuing them every time they get in trouble. Man. I don't have to agree with that, but. That, that that and that's that's a sad picture for some people, but but there's a thing that they teach in uh, the twelve step counseling that tells you some people got to reach rock bottom. They got to reach down. They got to reach all the way down before they really look up. They can pretend to look up, but when they really reach the bottom and there's no other place to look but up. That's when God can give them and build them a new a relationship. And that's, that's a, you know, those, there were some left in Jerusalem, the wider Judah, survivors to whom Ezekiel spoke, were those taken away to Babylon. He was the preacher uh, to the exiles. They lived by the river Kibar. Amen. Y'all know what happened when they first got to Babylon and they were so sad because they had never been defeated before. They were so sad. And the Babylonians, and I think it was in mockery, 
said, why don't y'all sing us one of them Zion songs? I didn't sing them. No, we're going to hang our hearts on the willow. Huh. How can we sing God's song, a Zion huh. song? Strange land. Strange land. But I want you all to know, it's in the strange land where the songs take on a significance that it did not have before. Amen. The, the, the Lord will make a way somehow didn't come out of the mouth of a person living in luxury out in Los Angeles in the hill. It came out of the mouth of somebody that was struggling. Mm -hmm. And I say to my soul, don't worry. The Lord no. will make a way. And, I, and let me say it. This is me and I'm going to move on into the lesson. When I'm in a struggle, it's good to have a song. Man. Nah. I was sharing to the preachers today. I said, young people today and middle age also, they, they throw up their hands. I don't know what I'm going to do. Grandma used to throw her hands up too. But she didn't say, I don't know what I'm going to do. She threw her hands up and said, Father, I stretch. I know that. Right. And said, Thee, no other help I know if thou withdraw thyself from me. Where? Oh, where shall I go? It's all right to throw up your hands, but throw up your hands toward God. The Babylonians' exile created great uncertainty about the people's relationship with God. Could God, who had allowed his holy city to be ravaged, his people carried into exile, still care for the people? <laughs> if he still cared, could he actually take care of them in a foreign nation and 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 to me that's a mute question god can take care of you anywhere amen amen and then what they were thinking about was they lost and now they're beginning to believe the enemy's propaganda that god couldn't save them don't huh. don't, don't believe that propaganda amen there's nobody god can't save there's no problem he can't solve there's no situation Amen. he can't deliver out of. There's no burden he can't help you to bear. But look what has happened. They've been carried away. They've lost. Jeremiah told them, you're going to see some stuff you ain't never seen before. You're going to suffer from stuff you never suffered before. And I know y'all don't believe it, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Uh, if America don't change, she's going to see some things she's never seen before. All right now. She's going to suffer some things she's never suffered before. Because the, the presence of God will keep a people. Mm -hmm. God will draw his protection and his care. I don't care how many weapons you've got in your arsenal. They don't compare to having God on your side. So the, All right. what, what, what Ezekiel's, the first part of the message was he wanted to deal with that proverb. Of course, you read the first chapter, first through the 18th chapter, and you'll see there were a lot of other issues going on. And, uh, but the Lord of, but the word of the Lord came unto me again. That was Ezekiel's way of letting the people tell you uh, to, uh, to know that I'm getting ready to tell you what God said. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, What mean ye? ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. The exiles wallowed in their misery of their well situation. They wallowed. They, 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 they brought more condemnation. And look, here's what really impounded the suffering. We ain't did nothing. <laughs> it's what our daddies them did. That put us in this situation. And Ezekiel is saying, your daddies did it, their daddies did it, and their daddies did it, and you did it too. Amen. And, 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 and believe me, 
Uh, and, and I hear people on television talking about uh, we didn't have slaves and, and we're not a part of this uh, racist uh, movement. Well, if you perpetuate an ideology, you are part of the same problem. You may not be practicing the same thing, but you perpetuate the same ideology. So you are a part of the problem. And, and I don't want to get into that discussion about racism and all that because it has played a part. It has not played a part. It is not to trust God. We have to trust God. But I want you to know that there are people who are perpetuating things against other people. And then they claim they ain't got nothing. Let me say this. The Lord said through Ezekiel, you are all to blame. Hmm. Stop trying to shift the blame on somebody else. Because the Lord said, even though your fathers did this and, and your fathers and your mother's decision can affect your beginning. Hope y'all listening to me. They can affect your beginning. Mm -hmm. Johnny Lee Brown Sr. was a farmer. Johnny Lee Brown Jr. was a farmer. Jimmy Lee Brown was born a farmer. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. Johnny Lee Brown Sr. was a farmer. Johnny Lee Brown Junior was a farmer. I was born on a farm because my daddy was a farmer. But he affected my beginning. But my choices, my decisions affect my end. I wish somebody would hear me. Today. Amen. Your own decisions. And, and, and you ought to get over the fact of how you were born and who you were born to and move on and try to live life and stop blaming other folks for where you are. Do something about it. Mm -hmm. You do have the opportunity. The problem oh, has some truth in it that the sins of one generation can be have lasting effects on the next. And we may think of how children suffer today when the breadwinning parent is sent to jail for a crime, Ezekiel himself pointed out the exile was the result of covenant unfaithfulness by many generations of Israelites. It didn't just happen overnight. And you were a part of the problem. But God has revealed himself as the one visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children into the third and fourth generation, Exodus 20 and five, the exiles ancestors were indeed guilty, but this generation had been expelled from the promised land because of their own sins. And that's one thing you have to come to the conclusion. I did this to myself. All right. I did this to myself and I found out you, you, you see a lot of things that people do they always say see what you made me do and you're gonna slap me upside my head and then you're gonna tell me I made you do it <laughs> it is easy to blame other people but honestly at some point you have to take responsibility for your own life, for your own decisions, and honestly, for your own destiny. I want all my children and all my grandchildren and all my family and all my friends, I want them all saved. But guess what? The last, the final decision is not left up to me. The decision of salvation I can teach you, I can show you, I can share with you, but it's left up to you. Don't blame others. Now here's when you can blame others, when they knew the truth and didn't tell you the truth. And that's gonna be the accusation on some of us, that we had opportunities. I, 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 
I never will forget. I heard this story. It was, and it was not a, a, a true story, but it was a story about a man that was raised next door to a boy. And the boy was going on and he got into a lot of trouble and the man was going on and he lived a good life. And when it came time, the boy was being executed and the man's position required him to be there for the execution. And the boy asked the man one question. With all them years when I was growing up next to you and all those years that I used to see you going to work, he said, why didn't you ever tell me about Jesus? And I don't want that guilt on me that somebody is facing death row and above all that somebody is following facing death period and I had opportunity and I didn't tell them about Jesus the problem in today's text is that the exiles specifically applied this proverbs to disavow any culpability for the situation amen in so doing they can claim that God is unjust in his dealing with them. But you need to know that our God is a just God. And most of the time, what you get is less than what you got coming. Amen. Amen. The whole, verse four, all souls are mine. As the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sinneth it shall die. The wages of sin is that everyone belongs to God. <clears throat> he is the sovereign creator. This includes his chosen people as well as their Babylonian oppressors. They belong to God. His justice was not in not limited by national borders. Therefore, he has the right to declare that the soul that sinneth it shall die. Each person is responsible to God for his or her own sin. And God will deal with each person individually. And given the Israelites his law, God commanded that fathers <laughs> will not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the father. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. The principle applied to how God dealt with his exiled people. His judgments are fair and true. It was pointless for the exiles to insist on their innocence. The Apostle Paul echoed Ezekiel's words by stating the wages of sin is death. But guess what? In the midst of people suffering and going down. There's still some people, we get a case study here, Ezekiel 5 and 18, 5 and 9, of a man's actions. Do you know, no matter what's going on around you, it doesn't make you lose your relationship and fellowship with God. It don't matter what everybody else is doing. If a man be just, look at verse 5 and do that which is lawful and right. Amen. You have to decide that yourself. Verse six, and had not eaten upon the mountains. What does that mean? Worshiping idols, the high places. Neither had lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. The high places featured altars often dedicated to the worship of Canaanite deities such as Baal. To look to the idols of Israel was to worship and seek help from false gods or to make an image of the true God for worship. Proper love for God begins with worshiping no other God, where did God say, I'm jealous. Thou shall have no other God before me. 
And the new issue that America is facing is idolatry. Is idolatry. And one of the idols that America is worshiping is money. Finance. Financial security. Revenue trails, as they call them. They'll sacrifice any and everything for money. That's just one of the idols. We, we've got so many idols. We almost like Babylon. We almost like, uh, ex, I mean, like uh, uh, Egypt. We've got so many idols and things that we worship that we put before God. Listen, at the, again, this case study, neither had defiled his neighbor's wife, neither had come near a minstrel's woman. They're just talking about violating the law. The just man also was careful to stay morally pure. The laws of Moses prohi prohibited not only adultery, but also uh, carrying on with women under certain circumstances. The penalty and violation was that both of them shall be cut off from among the people. What is he talking about? We've got to have morals. Everybody around us can be immoral, but we have to have morals. Have not oppressed any, has not restored or hath restored to the debtor his pledge. Pay your bills has spoiled none by violence, has given his bread to the hungry, has covered the naked with a garment. He that hath not given forth upon usury, charging people interest, neither hath taken an, any increase, that hath withdrawn his hands from iniquity, has executed true judgment between man and man. What, what is he trying to say here? You can live a life that's pleasing to God even when you are surrounded by people who are not trying to please God. He walked in my statute and has kept my judgment to deal truly. Here we have a sparkling example of the parallelism that is hallmark of Hebrew poetry, Hebrew poetry, he walketh in another way of saying, hath kept. Likewise, God's statutes are the same as his judgments. These same two sets of parallels of the underlying Hebrew terms are also found in other scriptures. Comprehensively, the righteous person does not follow the selfish, sinful ways of others in any respect. You have got to have a made up mind and a dedication to faithfulness to be pleasing to God. This person is just, he shall surely live saith the Lord God. Because you're around corrupt people, look, Isaiah recognized that he was around corrupt people. Men of unclean lips. He said, mine unclean people too. Cussing is what we do. <laughs> and just the way we talk until he met God. When he met God, I'm telling you, when you really meet God and you really have an encounter with God, he can change you in the midst of everything you're surrounded by. He can lift you up out of that. We may note in passing that the capitalization of the phrase, the Lord God, indicates different Hebrew words that does capitalizations of the phrase, the Lord God, as the latter occult occurs in Ezekiel 20 and 5. There are three single word Hebrew names for God in the Old Testament, Yahweh, Adonai, Elohim. The phrases the Lord God and the Lord 
God indicate different combinations of these names. Preaching to the exiles. What you gonna preach? Tell them that even surrounded by Rome, they can do right. Tell them when surrounding by people that are living immoral lives, they can live moral. Tell them when men are embracing all other ideas and faith and ideologies that they can worship the true and living God, keep his statutes and his commandments and be pleasing to God. Here's the call of Ezekiel to these people. Repent. Verse 30 and 31a, therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgression. He ain't talking to people that haven't done anything wrong. He's not talking to people that haven't made any mistakes. He's not talking to people who haven't participated in things that weren't pleasing to him. He says, turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity should not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed. And guess what? We've got better, uh, even more secure solution than Ezekiel was presenting. He was telling them what to turn away from, but we also can add now they can turn to Jesus. Ezekiel couldn't say that. But you can turn away from, cast away from you these transgressions. If you're doing stuff you know is wrong, you ought to cut it out. And with the help of God, I don't care what you're bound by, with the help of God, you can overcome. What follows recalls Solomon's prayer that God would forgive the people of their sins and heal their land when they repented. Israel's sense of national connectedness had diminished following the division into two kingdoms after Solomon's death. 930 BC, a sense of moral responsibility for the sins of the community followed. However, the scriptures insist that both guilt and salvation have a corporate aspect. Sinful characteristics are transmitted from generation to generation. Amen. Well, my daddy did this. Well, my mama was like this. But that doesn't mean that that's how you have to be. God affirmed that he would also judge each person individually according to his or her walk before God. My brothers and sisters, this is important enough to restate in a slightly different way, God said that he would, would judge the house of Israel, every one of you according to his ways. Although each person was responsible for his or her own guilt before the Lord, individual decisions affected the community as a whole. And since we have chosen to be quiet, Look how the devil is creating chaos in our community. So, since we decide to internalize our relationship with God and no longer try to win men and women to God, look how the devil is spreading his poison of hate, distrust. Yeah, we meet God individually. But we that believe in God have a collective responsibility to lift up the, the moral standard, to lift up the principles of God, to tell men and women what God is looking for. 31B said, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die? 
whole house of Israel. And uh, uh, I know bad things are bad for you right now, but you can overcome this too. I don't care what you're in, God can bring you out. Heard one guy said, uh, and, and I think it was a scientist, says about <coughs> pain that once you indulge in it, that it does something to your brain and you can never really conquer it again. I don't believe that. I believe with God, all things are possible. He said, I'll make you a new heart and a new spirit. Why will ye die? Don't surrender. Don't give up. Don't blame other people. Your responsibility to God is your responsibility. And here's the good news. The Lord said, I have no pleasure in the death of him that died. Said the Lord, wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. You can live. You can not only exist, you can live. You can have the joy of the Lord. You can have the presence of the Lord. God don't want to see you fall. God don't want to see you uh, 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 destroyed. He wants to deliver people from their unfaithfulness and the death that it brings. He judges, but he also provides all people with a means of salvation so they can avoid the judgment. Preach Ezekiel. God issues an invitation to repent and live. Preach Ezekiel. He's done so many <laughs> wonderful things. So many times he's brought us out. He demonstrates love by his willingness to set people free from their <sighs> sinful past and the punishment they deserve. Yet he demonstrates his holiness by not allowing sin to continue indefinitely. You can live. <laughs> Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You can live. God does not desire your demise. He desires your salvation. And the love of God demonstrated how much he wanted that. The passion of Ezekiel, based on the knowledge of the word of God, demonstrates how much he believed that God could and would deliver those that trust in him. The love of God demonstrated on Calvary his desire for us. If we would repent, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. These exiles imagine themselves to be victims of a cosmic injustice, but God is not an unjust God. God is a righteous God. And somebody said, and I repeat it again, stop complaining you don't get what you want, and thank God you don't get what you deserve. Amen. We all are worthy of death. But instead, God offers us life. Preaching to the exiles. Preaching to the exiles. And there's hope. Even though you've been cast out, there's hope. Because God is still real. Praise his name. God bless you. Uh, that's my take on the lesson tonight. Are there any questions on anything that we discussed? You know, I, I really personally prefer monologue. I mean, I prefer dialogue to monologue, but I mean, I'll do both. But but I, I like for others to uh, chime in occasionally and, uh, and speak to what I see so that maybe you can help me to see even more of what God is trying to say to us through these words.
being like Ezekiel. And the Lord asked Ezekiel in the 37th chapter, can these bones live? Sometimes our situation, it looks, looks real bad. Mm -hmm. You know what the solution to our situation, even today, the word of God. What the Lord said, preach to the bones. Mm -hmm. Preach to the bones. Lord, they dead. Preach anyway. <laughs> they don't want to hear it. Preach anyway. Declare the word of God. When he started declaring the word of God and believing in the power of God, something started happening to the bones. And they stood up like a mighty army when the spirit got through and the word got through with them. And when the spirit and the word get through with us, it'll make a great difference <laughs> in our lives. God bless you. All right, Brother Collins.